In today's rapid evolving technological landscape, computer science is a field that has become increasingly important and in demand. As more and more industries continue to rely on technology, the need of skilled professionals who can design, develop, and implement innovative solutions has been greater. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to University Living YouTube channel. You are watching UL TV Student Diaries. I'm Shifali Shirastav, your study abroad money. Today, we will discuss the Bachelor of Computer Science offered by Swinburne University of Technology, which ranks among the top 150 universities across worldwide in computer science, according to the Times Higher Education subject ranking. The Bachelor of Computer Science degree program is designed to provide students with a strong foundation in computer science principles, programming language, algorithms, software engineering, and hardware designing. In today's video, in today's discussion, we'll explore the various aspects of Bachelor of Computer Science program, including the curriculum, career opportunities, and potential salary expectations, and also how the life is in Australia for an international student. And to share more light on the subject, we're joined by Ishan Manga from Swinburne University, bringing further knowledge on this topic. Hi, Ishan, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I am doing great. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from there. And uh, before we dive in, like, of course, and as we dive in also, let's talk about Melbourne and Australia as a like, country for a like, study abroad destination. How far your experience has been in Melbourne? It's been pretty good, actually. Uh, it's like a roller coaster where you learn a lot. I, I personally have learned a lot being an individual. Uh, like in India, I never went. Uh, out uh, buying groceries with my mom, but here I had to buy groceries, um, uh, you know, uh, accommodation rent and washing dishes and washing clothes and doing part-time jobs and everything. So I've I've grown individually and uh, right. yeah, it's, it's good. And plus the weather here is quite unpredictable and that's a plus one. So that's a plus? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I like for me, like I never wanted to go to uh, any country like Canada where it's so cold, freezing cold, but here in Australia, it's like uh, moderate weather, changing weather, changing climate, so I like that. Right, right. So you have addressed the question that I'm going to ask further in the conversation, which I'm going to, again, going to ask so that you can share more, you know, information around it. However, like, what did you plan for Melbourne? Is Melbourne the exact way how you thought it? Or maybe Sydney is better than Melbourne? What are your thoughts on this? So, um, since my uncle and aunt lives in Melbourne, they are already citizen here. So my parents always wanted me to send to someone like so that they can take care of me and they can have, you know, uh, they can look upon me. So Melbourne was always my first option. Plus when I researched more, so I found out that Sydney is a bit more expensive and a bit more crowded as well. So yeah, of course, Melbourne was my first choice. Okay, great. So you have planned, you were already very clear that you you were going to study abroad, correct? Yeah. Okay. And when did you started planning with this whole, uh, you know, process? So I was in my grade 11th when I, uh, when I traveled to Australia before, like I've, I've already been here uh, as a tourist. So I really liked the country and the environment. And then I started planning to study abroad. And then that's how my uh, journey started. Okay, great. So did you also plan, uh, you know, took any kind of English test like IELTS or TOEFL or Duolingo? Did you take any test? If yes, then what, what is your feedback on that? Which kind, which test you will recommend for any aspirant who is going to travel really soon uh, to, uh, you know, a destination? So uh, during my time, I gave IELTS and uh, I never took any uh, coaching. I just uh, studied on my own for two months for yeah one or two months and then I just gave my exam uh, so I gave IELTS but now if I like talk to any agent or any other students my friends they suggest me that PTE is a bit more easy and like PTE is accepted in almost all universities uh, preferably in, on, in Australia so yeah I would say like if I had to give my exam once more I'll definitely go with PTE. Right so in Australia PTE is definitely recognized uh, massively yeah. uh, by the audience and university so true makes sense and okay so you have already selected down the country and the city when you were planning out your study but what made you nail down on this particular university why did you choose Swenburn University um first of all I got a very high scholarship so I got 50 percent scholarship and uh 
So like the the while I while I'm doing the part time, the money I earn, I can easily pay off my fees easily. So I haven't got anything from my parents yet. Like I haven't asked for money yet. So that's a thing. Like I'm proud of it quite. And uh, uh, second thing is like Swinburn is quite uh, cheap if we compare to like. uh kind of universities like monash or university of melbourne it's quite affordable plus it of course ranks in top uh, universities it comes in i guess 1% universities in the world and as you said it's uh, 150th in computer science among the top 150 yeah right? yeah uh, and of course scholarship does play a very important role now you have already addressed one question that you haven't taken any financial aid from your parents and scholarship you know played a major role in that so if you can elaborate more around it uh what aspects made you uh, you know the winner of that scholarship you you got offered that you know you got awarded by that scholarship so mm-hmm. what things you did which was the reason for that maybe others can also practice the same thing yeah so first of all getting good marks in your cbse board exams so i got around 94% in my cbse boards uh which led me to get 50% scholarship plus of course the ielts uh, i got seven bands in ielts uh many of my friends also got above 95% in their board exams and they uh, received 75% scholarship in swinburn so they just have to pay just 25% of their fees so it's you know so it's it's very easy and uh also it was during covid like uh, during covid lockdown time uh students were not taking admissions in abroad and like university was universities were having a loss a huge amount of losses so they uh, swinburn came to an idea of g- giving huge amount of scholarships to students so that's how i got 50% scholarship and my friends got 75% but unfortunately now that covid like is bit uh, like low so now they have reduced scholarship again it's just i guess 30% scholarship now right yeah. right i know covid news is has a mixed feeling from many, many people it's fortunate for some unfortunate for some yeah. but yeah i get your point and yeah I, so i believe academic records play a major role in scoring the scholarship correct true true okay great great so now moving forward in this whole conversation let's talk about the course that we're talking about so bachelor's in computer science is really famous course in india as well mm-hmm. why didn't you choose to pursue it in india but overseas because i always because i always wanted to go abroad because quality of education in abroad is you know much better than if we compare to education in india plus uh, if i compare to crime rates and like a lot of stuff like so of course education in abroad was much better option if i had to do in india okay correct great right. now what does this course you know encapsulate about it what is the curriculum if you talk about in which year you are right now and what you going to read further in the future what does the placement facility what's the career graph over here if you can elaborate on that so right now i'm in my third year first semester i'll be graduating in november or december and for placements it's not like india like in india we always choose the best college with best placements and stuff but here uh, you are your own uh, boss you have to after graduating you have to go out to companies apply for uh, their jobs and then how you get selected and it's all it's always based on your experience and what you have learned not on you know not on college and yeah correct right. so you must be getting some career guidance at university correct there are many e cells many uh, clubs that help you guys in networking and you know getting the right exposure so if you can elaborate on this that what kind of clubs are there and what is the career graph going forward for example once you are past even once you are graduate then what's the next step for you which kind of job role you might land so in swinburn if i talk particularly there are a lot of clubs and i am very enth- enthusiastic about being part of clubs and activities i was always very uh, excited about it so right now like i am president of swinburn punjabi club i also dance very well so i am president of swinburn dance club as well and i am ethnocultural representative of swinburn students union so like i hold various position in swinburn right now and uh, like of course it makes you extrovert like you like earlier i used to be afraid of talking in english and you know talking to other people and make friends make connections but uh, these things make you more uh, you know uh, 
make you more give you more confidence yeah yeah exactly exactly so it, it did bring more confidence in me and then uh and the regard, regarding your other part of the question uh like what opportunities i get in computer science field uh after graduating i can either like my major is, is data science so e either i can apply for a data scientist role data analyst or i can either apply for any other field like web designer software developer or yeah cyber security expert Okay, makes sense. Correct. So um, you have already discussed a part of this question earlier. You have already mentioned that you have started being more independent. And uh, uh, now in this question also address that you have been more confident when you, you know, you're st studying over there. What other personality traits and development or growth has happened at your uh, end? Why this move? So first of all, I became independent. That's very clear. And then uh, I I started taking initiatives like uh, you know that that adrenaline rush uh, like taking any each step further so for like being the president or like taking parts in the activities and everything uh, that made me push more towards my goals and yeah so that's how great and this additional question this is not in the script but guys this is a very good question because I know a lot of you want to be a budding influencer and Ishan is actually one of them. He is growing very fast he, and he has started creating content a lot in Australia. Now, Ishan, how are you managing your time balance, your work life? I'll say work only. You're, how are you managing your life right now because you're a president also at club, you're pursuing your course also and you're in the final years. So of course, the pressure right now on you might be higher than the other you know, semesters and years and you're also creating content. So how are you managing this and what made you push to drive that content? So this uh, made me remember my uh, uh, like one one more point. Uh, in India, I was very lazy. I used to wake up at twelve p.m. and you know, like during lockdown, I didn't had any work. But after coming to Australia, I always had that rush, and I became an early riser. And uh, I started doing everything like I had to do part time, and I have to be my best. So. Uh, yeah, of course, then I started managing time as well. It was a bit hard in start, but now I can pretty much manage everything. Right. So just because you became an early riser, influencer thing came into picture, or there must be something that motivated you, right, to become an influencer. Um, yes, like uh, like I always wanted to help others. And like always, I I, I used to receive a lot of DMs on Instagram, like uh, how to get scholarship in Swinburne and like everything related to Australia. So I thought like, why not to start creating content about it? Because people are actually asking, willing to know about more, more about it. So I started making content and recently I uh, did whole of these university reviews, which received a lot of uh, views right now. Great, great. And how are you managing this? Like with whole college going on and you're doing a part-time job also, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this, is, this is getting crazier and crazier. You're doing part-time job, you're creating content, you're doing college also, which is a full-time college. You are also a club and, uh, you know, participating to extracurricular activities and you're also going and buying your own groceries. So how are you managing this? So here's the thing, while you are planning your timetable, like in India, we have, like we have fixed timetables, but here in Australia, you can make your own timetables so i always put all of my classes in one single day and for me that's wednesdays so like for my whole of semester i only have to go to university on wednesdays i put all of my classes on wednesdays all of meetings group projects everything on wednesdays so that other days i can do part time i can take content on weekends i make content and you know like that's how i manage Great, great. Now we're doing all these activities and, you know, um, getting an scholarship also, doing a part-time job also, you're being an influencer also. Uh, you have, a, a, you know, a pocket money earning, I'll say, correct? So I, how are you managing your cost of living in Melbourne? Like Melbourne is definitely a little less uh, budgeted, I'll say, compared to Sydney, but it's not that cheaper. It's not a cheaper city to be. Mm -hmm. So how are you managing over there? And what is a cost of living for an, any international student who's planning to study over there? I would say I'm a bit fortunate. I'm a bit lucky that I have my uncle and aunt here. So I am living with them right now. And 
uh, through that I save a lot of money, my accommodation rent, I don't have much of my groceries expenses. So I only have the major expense I have is of transport plus my other, uh, like I do buy a bit some of my groceries as well. Uh, but I don't have that major expenses. So the money I earn, I can easily pay off my fees. Uh, and But my many of my friends do uh, live on their own and they have to pay their accommodation, rent, groceries, everything, bills, transport fees, ex ex everything. So uh, like for rent in Australia, uh, right now it's accommodation crisis here in Australia. So rent is too high and uh, you can, if you if you if you want to live in a studio apartment, you can get it for thirteen hundred AUD, around thirteen hundred uh, AUD per month. Uh, but if you want to share it with your any of your roommates or if you have any friends, you can just share it with them, and it will be much cheaper than like around six hundred per month, six hundred Australian dollar per month. Plus, uh, regarding other expenses like groceries, it will take only around. 200 Australian dollars for one month of groceries, uh, 150 dollars for transportation fees, and uh, let's add 150 dollars more for uh, any other like your interest, whatever you want to like shopping or anything. Yeah. Right, right. So, what's the round figure if we talk about uh, with respect to, of course, the accommodation crisis, which I was going to highlight when you said that you're fortunate to, to live with your family, which is a true case. A lot of people are struggling right now to get an accommodation. So, what is the round figure we need to put on this number? Like, is it like two thousand dollars or thousand or fifteen hundred dollars? Yeah, I would say around sixteen hundred to two thousand Australian dollars per month. To $2, yeah. Uh, live a Okay, like when you don't go and party a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Plus, if you don't live in uh middle of the city, like middle of the city is too expensive, but it's also very near to all of the other amenities, like you know, gym or swimming pool or universities or supermarkets, everything. City is the main uh in Melbourne and it's quite expensive. But if you live a bit far in suburbs, it will be much cheaper. So I would mm -hmm. always suggest everyone to, you know, uh live a bit far from city and you can easily transport a uh, trans uh, travel as well so uh living in suburbs is much easier yeah i believe that's a mixed opinion because over here many many people are looking only for less transport they're not convenient in transport and uh, doing a lot of transportation throughout the day so of course you can go ahead and sit, live nearby the university but of course there's a certain cost related to that and uh, so ishan has been fortunate because he has his you know relatives over there however just in case if you don't have a friend or family abroad go ahead and book your accommodation on timing because ishan has already shared that there's an accommodation crisis going on which we have been saying again and again across the world it is not just limited to australia or uk or canada it is across the world if you talk about so don't waste your time just go ahead and book your accommodation there is uh, you know, different uh, facilities available just in case you don't get visa and all. You should definitely go and check out university living. So Ishan, before we are almost near the end and I didn't realize that, you know, we have discussed so many things and I still have so many of questions, but I'm going to limit myself just to two questions. Uh, if I ask you to, dis you know, describe study abroad in five words, what would it be? So I would say being independent, uh, enjoy your life, uh, Study well and do part time jobs as well. <laughs> right. And have a perfect life of balance. That's a fifth point that I believe Ishan would definitely like to highlight. So you are there for studying, and that does not mean that you don't do part time jobs or you don't do party or you don't enjoy your life. It's always important to have a perfect life balance among all this. So balance is the major component to enjoy a better life, not just while you're being a student, but also post that. Thank you so much, Ishan. But before we wrap up, do you have any advice for the aspiring students across the globe who also ever want to go to any part of the world, not just Australia? Yeah, so students who are planning to study abroad start looking for accommodation because as you said, it's uh, accommodation crisis right now, not on, only in Australia, all over the world. So I would suggest to start looking for accommodation three months prior because even like I'm living here and I was planning to move out and I was trying to uh, search for my accommodation and I couldn't find it. So like, it's it's super tough. So you have to plan ahead. Right, right. So planning an accommodation, getting a work life, you know, a balanced life while being an international student, study, enjoy, you know, party a lot, balance a lot, do part-time jobs. That's also very important. And 
you know, relive yourself, reinvent yourself if that's required, because that's why you're there to live the best out of you, to get the best out of you, to get the full potential. On this note, we'll be closing our session. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you found it useful. Looking forward to seeing you guys next Friday at 5 p.m. Stay tuned to our social media handles for more information. Thank you so much, Ashan, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.